Hello everyone, welcome to the presentation on IA Richards. Ivor Armstrong Richards is considered to be one of the most influential critics of the 20th century. Along with T.S. Eliot, he propagated several critical ideas that became the founding principles of uh, new criticism. He is a multifaceted genius who has made significant contributions to the diverse arenas of literature. His uh, major works are The Meaning of Meaning, Practical Criticism, Principles of Literary Criticism, Signs and Poetry, Coleridge on Imagination, etc. Uh, Richards emphasized the close study of a text, which implied a detailed analysis of language, diction, and imagery. Richards' fame as a critic rests mainly on practical criticism, a work that came out in 1929, and this is also considered to be his most influential work. So Richards conducted a series of experiments while in Cambridge, and the observations that he had drawn from these became the basic tenets of practical criticism. He distributed poems, cleared of all details pertaining to its historical period and authorship to his students, and asked them to critically evaluate the works. So through these experiments, he tried to identify the factors responsible for the misreading of poems. Now let's take a look at all the factors that contribute to the misreading. Most readers fail to understand the sense or the basic meaning of the poem as they tend to misconstrue its feeling, tone and intention. This hindrance in understanding the meaning is made more problematic by the impediments or difficulties in sensuous comprehension. So readers often fail to grasp the natural rhythm of words and this again results in a lack of clarity. Now, imagery is another important factor. Imagery is a crucial factor as the images evoked in the mind of the reader will obviously vary from one individual to another. The personal images that one's mind conjures up and the varied associations that rise to the surface during the act of reading contribute to the misreading. Richards also identifies the critical trap of stock responses that are based on the personal prejudices of the reader. The reader's preconceived assumptions become very important in determining the meaning of the poem. Sentimentality, that is an overflow of emotions and inhibition, the, which is the inability to enjoy poetry, also play a major role in this process, the process of misreading. Now, Richards uh, did not believe in doctrinal adhesion in poetry and felt that the ideas and notions contained in poetry can perplex or confuse readers if they try to gain worldly knowledge from it, the poem, the poetry. Another factor that Richards identifies is the preconceptions based on the technical aspects of writing. Readers might idealize a particular pattern of writing or style and expect similar paradigms from the poet. Now, this often uh, leads to a blind refusal to accept new and innovative models. Finally, readers can also misread uh, due to the presence of general critical perspectives, uh, viewpoints, that will mold the way in which the reader understands the nature and value of poetry. According to Richards, the basic objective of practical criticism is to encourage readers to focus on the words on the page. That was what he said, you know, you look at the words on the page. He points out that the critical reading of poetry is never an easy task as it is an endeavor that must be undertaken with diligence and care. As the reader engages in a close analysis of the poem, he will attain an organized response. And this, according to Richards, is the proper response to poetry. Let's take a look at uh, aesthetic experience and synesthesia, according to Richards. 
Richards analyzes the functioning of the human mind and describes it as a network of impulses. Uh, he believed that uh, these impulses give rise to attitudes that inspire uh, imaginable and incipient activities or tendencies of action. Impulses often tend to be in a state of uh, conflicting interests. The ensuing conflict cause a lack of harmony in the human mind. And in order to attain harmony, all impulses have to be satisfied. But this is only an ideal situation and it is rarely actualized. So according to Richards, uh, the value of literature and art in general is that it enables the human mind to attain a balanced state of harmony. When the poet experiences and records this harmonious state of the mind through good poetry, a reader can experience it in the act of reading. Thus, poetry becomes a source of emotional equilibrium and uh, mental peace. This process of balancing of conflicting impulses is termed as synesthesis by Richards. And he uses the term synesthesia to describe the balanced state in which one experiences this absolute harmony. The next uh, idea is the two uses of language according to Richards. So Richards tried to make a distinction between the two uses of language, emotive and scientific. The scientific use of language is used for reference hmm, and for explaining the concepts of uh, truth and falsehood. On the other hand, the emotive use of language focuses on the emotions and attitudes evoked by the reference. Thus, it may be argued that the scientific use of words refer to the uh, denotative uh, meaning and the emotive use indicates the connotative meaning. These two uses of language express different areas of human activities. Okay? The activities which aim at truth make use of the scientific aspect and those that aim at feeling can be conveyed through the emotive aspect. References in uh, scientific use are left intact, uh, whereas in emotive use they are often distorted. Now let's examine how poetic statements uh, become pseudo statements. So uh, distortions of the referential aspect lead Richards to call poetic statements as pseudo statements. A pseudo statement uh, should not be confused with a false statement. Okay. Pseudo statements cannot be empirically tested because it is merely a form of words whose scientific truth or falsity is irrelevant to the purpose in hand. Poetic language is not always logical for it is often distorted by devices like figures of speech, metaphor, simile, uh, synecdoche, etc. And rhythm, not just figures of speech but also rhythm. Richards employs the term emotive and not poetic because he was talking about literature in general. Pseudo statements imply a form of words which is justified entirely by its uh, effect in releasing or organizing our impulses and attitudes. Uh, it may be argued that since poetry is emotive, we should not turn to it for knowledge. Richards believed that there is no intellectual doctrine in poetry. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you know he, he did not believe in doctrinal adhesion. In fact, he was a vociferous critic uh, against doctrinal adhesion in poetry. And Richards praises uh, the wasteland, Eliot's uh, wasteland, because he believed that it uh, effects a complete severance between poetry and all beliefs. We move on to the four aspects of meaning. So according to Richards, all utterances consist of four aspects, sense, feeling, tone, and intention. Sense is the meaning of an utterance that is conveyed by the literal signification of the words, okay? the literal meaning that you get from a particular utterance. When an individual makes an utterance, the hearer's attention is directed to certain items. 
the writer's or speaker's attitude about the items. Items mentioned earlier, okay? Items of conversation constitute the aspect of feeling. His or her interests, likes and dislikes can be analyzed using this aspect, the aspect of feeling. Next is tone. Tone refers to the writer's attitude towards his readers or the speaker's attitude towards his listeners. The tone of the utterance is always determined by the person who is being addressed. Okay, who are you talking to? That is uh, whom the tone is based on. And finally, every utterance carries within itself an intention that is either conscious or unconscious. Intention directs the effect of the utterance and regulates the specific emphasis that the speaker intends to convey. Richards believed that any given communication written or spoken is a combination of these four aspects. So these four kinds of meaning in various permutations and combinations create the total meaning. Usually in a language use, one or more of these factors uh, will be predominant and it is often the subject matter and the intention that determine the priority of the other factors or functions. For example, uh, the writer of a scientific uh, treatise will put more emphasis on sense rather than feeling. Okay? His uh, focus, his or her focus would be more on conveying the ideas to the reader. So there, therefore, there would be an extra emphasis on sense. Uh, another example would be uh, the example of a political speech. In a political speech, intention and feeling are more important than tone and sense. That is not to say that, you know, tone and sense are completely absent, but intention and feeling take on a higher degree of uh, priority. In conclusion, I. A. Richards was a visionary who thoroughly revolutionized the field of criticism with his seminal ideas. He encouraged unhistorical readings of poems and this was criticized by later critics. Nevertheless, Richard's relevance as an important critic cannot be called into question and he is somebody who initiated a new critical paradigm that influenced not only later critics but also later schools of critical thought. So that's all for now. Hope all of you understood the basic critical ideas put forward by I. Richards. Thank you.